Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright, so US Secret Service Secretary Kim Cheadle is finally brought in for questioning. You know, we're all looking for information here, we're looking to answer the unanswered questions to kind of fill in the gaps and understand exactly what happened here, but of course that isn't what we got now, is it? No, definitely not. Instead, what we got is more confusion and an unbelievable amount of frustration. I have never witnessed such a level of entitlement in my entire life. I'm I mean, we are talking about the highest level of failure. The only level higher than this would be if the shooter had actually succeeded in his task and the former president of the United States had sadly been taken away from us. That is the only thing that could have made this whole situation worse, and I'd argue only marginally worse in terms of, you know, Kim Cheadle's culpability. Of course, it would have been infinitely worse emotionally and for Trump supporters to have experienced the loss of their former president and current presidential candidate, but that's not what I'm referring to. I'm talking specifically about about the level of failure. The fact that they allowed this to happen, whether the president was assassinated or not, this is the highest form of failure. There's not much difference between those two scenarios. Essentially the highest level of failure, yet Kim Cheadle still refuses to resign. She refuses to resign as now even Democrats join in calling for her explicitly to resign from her post. And her response is truly shocking. Let me show you guys exactly what happened. Let's have a conversation about Kimberly Cheadle. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so it seems as though it's a bipartisan issue. Republicans and Democrats are alike are both calling on Kimberly Cheadle to step down from her position, but apparently that's not happening. You know, do you know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. And Stuart Knight was not a Democratic appointee or a Republican appointee. Look, I'm not questioning your judgment. I, and I just don't think this is partisan. If you have an assassination attempt on a president, a former president, or uh, a candidate, you need to resign. That's what Stuart Knight did. He was a Republican appointee, and he took responsibility. And I, I think you need to reflect. This is not a question of you. It's a question of the American people. You cannot go leading a Secret Service agency when there is an assassination attempt on a presidential candidate. I would, I would say that about anyone who uh, is running. And so I guess my question to you is, what's the difference between your position and what Stuart Knight did? What I will tell you, sir, is that I am dedicated to finding the answers to what happened. And like every Secret Service agent, we don't shirk from our responsibilities. I will remain on and be responsible to the agency, to this committee, to the former president, and to the American public. But is, is there a reason you wouldn't just do what Stuart Knight did after the Reagan uh, assassination attempt? I believe that I provided an answer. There's, there's nothing more that you have to say? I mean, do you really believe at this moment, given how divided the country is and the questions asked, that your service in this role is the best for the nation? I mean, I, I'm not saying you can't do public service again, you can't do something else again. Do you really genuinely in your heart believe that you being in this role is what's right for America at this moment? It's unbelievable. She is still outright refusing to step down. This is a person that is putting herself, her own career, and whatever it is that she's trying to get out of it, above national security. Kim Cheadle is a national security risk. She failed at the highest level, and the historical precedent when it comes to leadership ahead of her, in cases like this, is to resign, but she, of course, thinks that she's above it. In fact, it seems like she thinks she's above all of it. She showed up to this hearing, not willfully, by the way, she was subpoenaed, initially, I'm assuming, under Merrick Garland, Garland's order. She refused to testify. She was then forced to have to show up. Not only does she not feel the responsibility to step down after her objective, horrible failure, but she also apparently doesn't even feel responsible to answer the American people's questions. She didn't want to show up, and then when forced to show up, under oath, answer questions honestly, well, she came purposely underprepared or not prepared at all. During this entire hearing, I don't think Kim Cheadle even answered a single question. She brought no relevant facts, and essentially we learn absolutely nothing of value. Um, was it true that Secret Service was present at the Butler ESU briefing? There was a briefing between the uh, counter sniper teams was uh, that were working Secret on Service the ground. Was Secret Service present? 
Yes, to my knowledge. Okay, I want to read you a report from people that seem to be throwing you under the bus and stated that they were in attendance and that Secret Service was not in attendance at the security briefing, according to individuals with knowledge, to also include that the AGR building where the shooter Thomas Matthew Crooks was located um, was actually not a part of their security perimeter for that. So there was not Secret Service present. Has the Secret Service provided this committee a complete list of all law enforcement personnel that were there that day? Have you done that? Have you provided a list to the Oversight Committee? Yes I, or no? I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> that is a no. Have you provided all audio and video recordings in your possession to this committee, as we asked on July 15th? Yes or no? I would have to get back to you that on that. That is a no. You're full of sh today. You're just being completely dishonest. Have you provided all memorandums within the Secret Service? I would have to get back to you on that. That is a no. You are being dishonest or lying. Is this, was uh, this uh, attempted assassination of Donald Trump a failure of training or execution or both? I think that those are answers that we need to <laughs> Training, ex execution, or both? Which one? How many Secret Service personnel have been required to take a refresher course on how not to let people shoot Donald Trump? Our personnel are currently operational. We are examining the facts of this investigation, and we will make the changes necessary. What time did law enforcement become aware that there was an individual on the roof with a clear line of sight to President Trump? I am still verifying timelines. <sighs> of course. Uh, nine days in, you have no answer. How did he fly a drone over the area, period? Any part of the area? Again, I would have to go back and check the timeline of when that took place. And Do you have a timeline at all from, from any of the day? I have a uh, timeline that does not have specifics. That's shocking. <laughs> I, that is absolutely unacceptable. She came in with almost nothing. No real relevant details. You essentially get nothing. You want accountability? Well, too bad. These people couldn't care less. And you know, obviously, usually these hearings are meant to make you feel better. You're meant to walk away feeling less skeptical and better than before. But in this case, just as I stated, we learned pretty much nothing. Nothing new, that is. But that's not to say we got nothing at all. We did essentially get confirmation that, yes, it is as bad as you might have expected. Remember when I mentioned that joke that popped up on Twitter and other social media? Video websites about the Pac-Man security perimeter, right? Well, apparently, I made a little graphic for you guys and I showed you this. Well, it turns out that's kind of exactly what happened. At any point Saturday, did the Secret Service have an agent on top of that roof? Sir, I'm sure as you can imagine that we are just nine days out from this uh, incident and there's still an ongoing investigation. And so I want to make sure that any information that we are providing so, to you so, is so factual. You, you can't, okay. Why did the Secret Service not, can you answer why the Secret Service didn't place a single agent on the roof? We are still looking into the advanced process and the decisions right, that were right. made. Well, okay, okay. Let's, wasn't that building within the perimeter that should be secured? Do we agree with that? The building was outside of the perimeter on the day of the visit. Did you guys catch that? The director of the U.S. Secret Service, Mrs. Kimberly Cheadle, essentially just went on the record admitting that that roof, that slightly sloped roof, was not part of their security perimeter. My mind is blown. The number one high priority risk area, the one place that had a direct view on the President of the United States, or rather, former President of the United States, the one place that should have been covered apparently wasn't even part of their perimeter. I can't believe that she just uttered those words. And she uttered those words during a House hearing where she is refusing to resign from her position. It's absolutely mind boggling. When you fail at this level, when the degree of failure is so high, there's no staying on the job. What Kimberly Cheadle did is essentially tantamount to running a business into the ground as the active CEO and then saying, well, you know, I'm staying on. My bad guys are all out of a job. I am directly responsible for speed running this company directly into bankruptcy. Oops, my bad. I now hold the responsibility of staying on as CEO and I'm probably going to sign off on a fat bonus for myself by the end of the year as well. It's unbelievable. In the private sector, this would be totally unacceptable. You don't get to fail this hard and then stay on 
on the job. The fact that she hasn't resigned is frankly disgraceful. I don't know what else to say. I mean, what else can I say? Do I really need to go on and on explaining why Kim Cheadle needs to resign? Of course not, because it's blatantly obvious to literally everyone. I guess everyone but Kim Cheadle. What an absolute joke. But pretty much exactly what you'd expect from the federal government under the current leadership regime. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.